You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What is up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to another episode of All Talk with Tom and Eddie from the Hello Sport Podcast. Joining us this week is a man who has represented his state at the highest level. He's won Origin Series. I don't believe he's played for Australia yet, but he certainly could. One of the great mullets all time. One of the great heads all time. One of the greatest uh, footballers we've interviewed as well. Well, certainly the first and potentially the last Jai we've ever interviewed. To our knowledge, the only Jai in the NRL. You have to listen to the podcast to find out what the hell we mean by that. But without further ado, Dribble and Yarn, punters and dribblers, please welcome Clap. Give a round of applause. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Sing up. South Sydney's own Jai Arrow. The NRL are brave like getting four four rugby league teams teams of rugby league players. Media, dribblers all over there. If they're trying to then pair it into a Tim Zoo fight. (laughs) In Vegas. In Vegas. Vegas. Mate. Very interesting. When you hear that they're doing that, how much are you guys like? Were you were you the first team that was put in there, or was that the Broncos? Broncos, I think. The Broncos were. Yeah. Oh, we're pretty excited. I was pretty excited because I'd have been there. You don't mind a rip though, so like yeah, especially. I don't do enjoy myself. Up. Uh, I um I've already been there too, so I've experienced the whole Vegas experience, and mm. it did it got me excited. <laughs> Obviously, we've got a job to do. I understand. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to get my mind around that. I'm there to do a job. I'm not there to just have fun and party. But I think it um, gets me excited. That, and especially going to Vegas as well. Like, it's a pretty special place. Yeah. Even if you're not partying, like you can go do cool things in the street. And I went to this. Uh, I remember I went to, um, it was like a show. Not the Circle du Soleil. That, I went to that as well. Mm. That was pretty cool. I took Ella there, my now wife, and she fell asleep in the first two minutes. I'm like, what a, <laughs> it's too, what a waste too much, of money. Bro, there's too much going on, eh, like in, that, in that show. But we went to this smaller one. It was called Green Fairy. Yeah. It was like a comedy miniature Cirque du Soleil, which was mad, like had the best time ever. And like basically it was about them taking the piss out of the crowd and that. Bro, there was – one bloke with literally had no arms and he literally looked at him and goes, give me a round of applause, mate. He goes, you haven't clapped in 30 years or something. So <laughs> there was a show about that, which was, it was pretty mad. So there's all heaps of things to do, but. That's like real circus shit though. You know, like you see those photos of the circus back in the day where it was like real freaks, not to call yeah, proper, people without like arms proper, freaks, but you know what proper. I mean? Like you yeah, were like, saying like. It was like, like roll up, roll up, yeah. see the, the giant man and shit. I know? saw a photo of that the, the other bearded day. bearded woman. Where it was like, um. Hot button issue right now. Uh, <laughs> there was a uh, a photo of like the see the fucking wild fat man like this crazy fat person, <laughs> yeah. mate, and it's in black and white. And you're like you fucking walk past ten people like that anytime you go anywhere. Like it was just wild to see someone who was like considered the fattest person on planet Earth, and now you're like, mate, that guy's fucking it's, yeah. small comparatively, especially to pre-internet to the point where you know fat people. Were, at least that size were considered so rare you'd pay to see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is an outrageous concept now. I don't know if that's modern day Vegas, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I've do never you, been. <laughs> what do you do? You think that's going to be good for the game having it in Vegas? Like, what? How do you see this sort of benefiting rugby league? Yeah, that's an interesting question, eh? Because well, I was speaking to a few of the boys about it, and I feel as though Americans are so set in stone on their their own sports and yes. what they're passionate about and. And things like that, but but then again, like the Yanks or the Americans, sorry, the Americans love their love their sport as well. And I've no doubts like it being a new sort of a new sport to go there, and mm. um, they all love to party, they all love to have a beer and enjoy themselves. So I don't see why not. Can't mm. be good for the game, and um, hopefully to sell out too. Um, That'd yeah, be sick. Will it be? So will it be this new yeah. Raiders Stadium? Is, it, is that uh, where they want to have it? Yeah, at the. The Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders. Stadium. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't. Oh, I can't remember. The only stadium, other stadium I can think of is T-Mobile Arena, and that's for like the UFC, and yeah, boxing. That's and not even that concerts. That, does that concerts even hold that, that many, or is that sort of like twenty thousand? Nah, no, it's like twenty thousand. Yeah, I've actually been there to go. Oh, really? Post Malone, yeah, which was pretty cool. Hectic. Did you see him when he was out here recently? Yes, Chili Peppers. You're a big Post Malone man. Nah, nah. So it was kind of weird how it all panned out over in Vegas because I was there with like my best mate, and the way it panned out, I met this. So me and my mate were out at dinner at um, Hell's Kitchen, Gordon Ramsay's joint. Oh, yeah. And we were just chatting. 
And this girl next to us recognised that we obviously weren't from there. And she goes, oh, you guys from Australia. So I, I am as well, but I lived in Vegas for five years. And she said, do you want to meet me for a drink? Because we obviously didn't know where to go on that. So she's like, yeah, all right, sweet. So she's like, all right, meet me at the, the Aria, which is one of the hotel. Well, they all, they're all casinos because all of them. I don't know yeah. if you've been. Have you been there? I haven't been. been. There, yeah. Literally casino in every single joint and clubs. It's I'm fucking it's pumped for that. It's crook. <laughs> it's crook. It's not like yeah, it's like nothing you've ever <laughs> seen before. It's, it's wild. Um, so I met her at the Aria, and my mate was messaging her, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm just here. Come with, come with me." Found her, and she took us up into the high rollers, and I'm like, "Oh Jesus, that's that's okay." Didn't think anything of it, so I walk in, and I'm like, "Oh." What do you do? <laughs> so I was pretty intrigued. She goes, oh, I'm a poker player. Oh, wow. Professional poker player. So, um, Hectic. Yeah. Which I was rattling. She introduces to some of um, her friends and that, and they help professional gamblers. And they're like, do you want to come and play at tables with us? And I was like, looked over and I went, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, oh, look, boys, I'm nowhere near on your level, eh? Like, the minimum was dead set 10K a hand. Yeah, right. Oh, my US. God. Yeah, okay. And I was like, okay. yeah, boys, like, I'm nah. happy to sit here and have a beer and that, but there's no way I'm hopping on those tables. No, no I don't need 10K hands. Thank oh, you very much. Oh, no, oh, thank you. feel crook. Mate, you'd be a complete mess. I'd be sweating like a pig. Yeah. Playing 10K hands. No, that's that's <laughs> like, That's yeah. outrageous. Yeah. I couldn't, couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, and he was playing them and um, – one thing led to another and we all went out together and uh, the next morning I got a message and she said, do you want to come to Post Malone? And I was like, there's a bear shit in the woods. Like, <laughs> um, of course, like I'd love to go. Never had gone to a concert before then too. Oh, really? Yeah, so this was in October. Gone to a few since just quietly and um, yeah, she full on <laughs> organised for us to go to Post Malone and had her own bar and things like that. It was hectic. That's like, mad. Yeah. And wait, how'd you know her again? Just met her at Hell's oh, Kitchen. You just, you never met her in life. A good random <laughs> never, joint. No, yeah. I know it's a good random. I was trying to work out, like, was she an Australian chick in you? Or? Well, she was, but she lived in Vegas for And five, you just six met years. her there, right? Yeah. That's yeah. that's mad. Yeah. And um, she obviously had heard that we're heading back over, and the boys that I was with um, that I'd met over there, the professional gamblers, had heard that we're heading to Vegas. So they've obviously said, let me know when you're over. I said, there beautiful. Yeah, oh, yeah. really? Go the game? Oh, they've yeah. teed you back up. Maybe yeah. just say, just get one $10,000 hand ready and it's like I can yeah. play one yeah. of those. Get all the see, boys to go. chip in. Yeah, yeah that's front you. Idea. Well, yeah, that'd be nice. If, oh, 10K, man. Are you a poker man? Do you play? or? Nah, nah, not a poker man. Uh, I do enjoy a punt. Like I love, yeah. a, I love a beer and a punt on a Saturday on the horses. You're in good company. Tables, tables I'm not really too fond about. Um, like... I don't go out of my way mm. to go to the casino and play yeah. tables and yeah. stuff like that. But if I'm at the casino, I will. I'll put. But I'm not like a big, big gambler. I'm more say I'll take to the casino if I'm very lucky two, three hundred dollars with me. Yeah. If I lose, I'll either go back one more time or I'll just can it and just go. Nah, I'll just have a beer. I'll yeah. just, I'd rather I'd rather spend my money on something more. That's yeah, we're very similar. We like we like to go to the roulette and just try and have like one crack at red or black, and then just. But we'll you know we'll muck dictate around the and night, get, and then we might if we're feeling it, like let's go, you know, within reason hard at one color here and see where we go from there. And numbers, then numbers, play numbers. We play numbers yeah. after we've got our color out of the way. Yeah. So yeah. we go and we get a vibe for the table. We we fill in odds. We fill in evens. Evens. We fill like in black you, or red. Seems like you do everything together. Joy well, because when bait. we when <laughs> yeah. we go away, we are always together, yeah. and that's when we use it. Because I don't like if I'm if I'm in Sydney, I don't go to the casino. That's no way. It, right, but yeah. when you're in Melbourne, no when we go down for work, you're like maybe we go to the casino. In Perth, maybe we go to the casino. Adelaide. Adelaide, maybe we go to the casino. Well, it's just easy. Yeah. But that's what I mean. There's like, you know, so there's many things going on there. It's an out-of-town activity, I feel like. Yeah, if you don't know and you don't know the area very well, you don't know what to do, it's like this is a bit of fun. We're having a bit of a Yahoo. Let's go to the casino. Sure, they've got a cast. Exactly. Sure, right. they've got a cast. It'd exactly be interesting right. to see Vegas. Mm. You two in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I'm fucking- Special. Yeah, I've, I've got in very early with the missus and I'm like, Tickets are booked. It's a, it's a <laughs> no, it's work. It's a, it's a, it's I've got to go for work. I've got to go for work. Yeah. She does. Oh. She still doesn't understand how that makes sense. But oh, babe, Fuck. you wouldn't believe it, eh? I've got to go to Vegas for work. I'm gonna have to take one for the team. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, sorry. You've got to go for a week as well. <laughs> you look after the kids while I'm gone for two for a week. That's yeah. fucked. Yeah. Well, so. you're more like ten days. Hope well, that's all right. Yeah, we might, we might get delayed. I'm well, like, who knows? 
But listen, you're going for work, Joe. We're going for work. Um, horrible, eh? Horrible. Yeah. That was my old man. My old man too. He goes, oh, it looks like I'm going to have to come to Vegas to come and support you. <laughs> yeah, bloody hell. Because <laughs> he's, does he go to every single game? or is? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty. He does. Yeah, he's at majority of the games. Uh, unless we're in Queensland, but he'll drive to Canberra. Okay. Came, did he come to Tamworth? Pretty sure he come to Tamworth. Good Goes day. everywhere, man. Yeah, he loves it. Is he, so you're Queensland originally though? Yeah. Right? yeah. Your Gold family's Coast still up there? Mum's up there, yeah, right. so all spread out. Uh, Mum's up there still with her partner, my dad and his wife and one sister and nephew are on the Central Coast. And my younger sister is up in Airlie Beach with oh, her yeah. now husband and my other nephew. Hectic. Um, yeah. So you got family all over the joint. Yeah. But the literally. old boy comes to most of your games. Yeah, majority, yeah. He gets around it. He obviously loves it. Yeah. Um, loves the game, loves rugby league. That's why... Um, I sort of grew up because of him loving the sport and then fell in love with it, I suppose, through my old man. Did he yeah. play? Played at local league. Yeah. Um, played A grade and stuff like that. Danny Greystains, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, out west, so. Does he froth yeah. you being fucking like a professional footballer? Like, I can only oh, imagine loving something and then having my kid be fucking awesome at it would be like a very cool feeling. I don't know if he thro froths it. He's obviously... No doubt, it's pretty proud of me and where yeah. how far I've sort of come as a young kid growing up. I suppose mm. I don't have kids yet, but I'm assuming I'm assuming if you've got a kid, you want the best for him and um, for them to live out their dream. And I suppose that's probably the most satisfying thing for him is probably him seeing me live out my dream. And um, yeah, that's yeah. Were you uh, were you always good when you were young? Like were you a, were you one of those prodigies? Oh, I don't. I wouldn't say I was like I was never the best, mm. but I I wasn't too bad. I was, um, I reckon maybe under sixes and sevens. I was yeah scoring a lot of tries and shit like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. just run around kids. Yeah, and then well, everyone I know of kids that did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, um, as you get older and people catch up to you, um, I wasn't like a freak, but um, I loved to tackle. So that was one thing. Mm. Uh, I used to. I suppose hit as hard as I could um, and I enjoyed the game I love the game so I, I feel as though I've said it before as soon as I feel like um, footy's a job for me mm. I feel like that's the day I'll retire if the day I start playing footy for money is the day I'll retire so um, I suppose it's more just the love for the game but was I I wasn't a freak growing up but I were you in like rep teams and shit? You know, like yeah. coming through, are you sort of like <laughs> yeah. your parent, you know, like you're sort of, how, when do you start going, making rep teams and like when does yeah. it start happening where people are noticing you for playing? I was very lucky with that. Um, under 11s was my first one. Gold Coast rep, South Coast called it. And then was lucky enough the next year in under 12, that's when they pick a Queensland schoolboys team. Mm. Uh, made that. And then I was very lucky during the junior years. Like um, I did make majority of the rep teams especially the queensland ones mm. um you know i think that's not necessarily lucky then if you're making all of them well yeah i'm probably made, lucky to make one oh, i think so are you implying it was political and you're sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. school school yeah. boys was political yeah. maybe i was just a nice kid yeah so they couldn't leave me out because yeah. i was a nice boy so you're in the paper a lot growing up not in the paper you know that you but in, i was in the rep sides yeah, yeah. so no yeah. articles on the fridge mate no, yeah, a few. There must have been yeah, a couple. Of course there yeah, was. There must, must have been, been a couple. Been humble, I'm yeah. trying to think. Yeah, <laughs> mum did like sort of have the cutouts of me of in the newspapers. Um, younger. Signed my first little contract with the Broncos when I was 15. Really? Yeah, for a thousand bucks for the year. It's just hectic. Over that's, the four-month period. Yeah, they gave me $250. And then I just go blow it on whatever. Lollies. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, lollies. <laughs> lollies at 15. I don't even know what I bought with my... What would, you have to, what would you have to do with it for a contract with the Broncos at 15? Do you have to, do you have to get a training? Do you play yeah, for so, the junior 15? Do they have an under 15 side? Uh, they did, yeah. So during the year and that, they'd get us in maybe once a month for a training session. Mm. Uh, and then obviously keep an eye on you through all the schoolboys representative stuff and things like that. And then at the end of the year, you come together as a, as a team, essentially, and you play. We played a game. Um, and then 15s, 16s, 17s, I think that sort of happened. I remember I was 16, bro. That was the first army camp I did. That's Broncos. like their preseason army camp. It's called sort of chain, chain Gang Operation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've never – I remember just thinking, 
16 years old. I think back now, my God, it was stupid doing an army camp at 16. <laughs> it wasn't really based like an army camp, but we were set up in teams um, out in the middle of like Conungra or somewhere out there. God, couldn't even tell you. And we went for this massive hike and it was like an all day thing up back. And then um, they made us make our own. It was a hoochie. You know what a hoochie is? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's like literally just a piece of tarp. Yep. Is that the and one where you just put it on the ground? Or is that where you like toss? No, you like try to you try to get it like off angled the ground. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protect yeah. you from the elements, man. Yeah. I'm Gave okay. us a piece of foam that thin. It's a 16 and uh, <laughs> yeah, we had to do it. Woke up in the morning, made us sleep there on the grass and everything. Um, did the old... Yeah, boys were cooking a barbie for you, but then they didn't. They gave us ration packs. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they try and fuck with you mentally on those sort of camps and yeah, stuff, don't they? some boys broke down. I remember one kid, uh, we got to the top, and I don't know what it was from, from exhaust, or he was exhausted, and the altitude of how high we were mm. passed out, like just hit the deck. Oh, really? Bang, face first. Do you Gone. see like the Broncos hitting like... Write his name off the list. <laughs> Start crossing <laughs> yeah, it out. Yeah, We're yeah. rubbing it out with yeah, a rubber. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not made for it. Uh, there was a few boys who, yeah, who didn't get through that. So, And you never saw him again? <sighs> no. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Think yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah, like well. they were separating the men from the boys. We, um, we've got a, a theory here, and I don't know if you necessarily subscribe to it, but that kids called Jai, and specifically like kids coming through, seem to be like fucking kind of tougher. <laughs> and everyone else like there's something about a jai and a rugby league jai there's like you can also spell jai multiple different ways but if, you know eddie and i have always been like when you see a rugby league jai either coming through or already in the grade you're like that kid's a keep it on i'll take it yeah i'll I mean, take it is it true i don't know bloody hell well how many jais have you met in the top grade playing now there's a few i don't know whether i can't think there uh, are whitbread been, big jaws of whitbread jai whitbread. who's he playing for He's overseas now. Okay, we need NRL here. Not Man of Steel stuff. No disrespect to Jai with bread. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there one at the moment? There'd have to be at least one other one, isn't there? My point is, the only Jai in the NRL... Is the toughest Jai in town. That's right. <laughs> That's the sort of metric we're looking for. <laughs> this idiot. Yeah, this we got idiot, any Jais, right, Dave? Yeah. There is another Jai, Jai Hansen. I don't think he's played a first no, grade No disrespect, game. Jai. Not in the, big, the, not the top grade yet. We've yeah. got a... It's, I reckon it's a unique name too, so... Great name. I'll take it. Yeah, no. I was actually I was named after the long jumper, Jai Torino. Jai Torino. Jumping Jai Torino. Jumping were you really? Jai, yeah, I was. Were you really? When were you born? Uh, 95. 95. Heck, so he must born. have been jumping early. Yeah, well, he was jumping before 2000. You'd want to be jumping before the Olympics if you're going to make the Olympics. Is he? How does he fit in, jumping Jai Torino? Couldn't tell you. I had no, no idea. Just my mum and dad. Love Jai. It. Jumping Jai. I don't think they loved him. They might have seen him on the news or something and said, oh. Oh, I like that name and- Oh, does he spell it that way? I don't think he spells it I don't know how he spells it. How does he spell You're J-A-I? Yeah, I think he spells it J-A-I. I think yeah, he he's J-A-I. He's oh, from okay, Southport. okay, there you go. Which is... Southport? Queen, another Queenslander. The Goldie. Okay. There you go. This might mean something to you. During the Sydney Olympics, Sydney 2000, we are getting a train out of the uh, athletic stadium and we are on the train with Jumping Dry Tarema's dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> Are you kidding? There you go. On the way to go watch you. <laughs> yeah. Small world, eh? Small world, boys. <laughs> and now I meet a bloke named Jai. Named after, named Jai. after Jai. Jai. Yeah, legit. <laughs> Jai, that's actually wigged me out because we're big fans of Jumping Jai. Yeah, we yeah. are. We've, we were talking about him the other day. You got him on? You got him on? No, we haven't. No, but it, we, we, need were to. Looking at, we were looking him up, though. This is like legitimate. We're not take, we were looking up where the fuck is Jai Tarema at the moment. I think he's a cop now. Yes, he's Legit? a cop. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sure. listen, there's only so much you can make out of the jumping game, you know what I mean? Before surely, you gotta... surely if you've gone to the Olympics, you're bluffing your way to become a coach of that sport that you do. Yeah, but I don't know how much money's in the jumping game generally, right? Like, Long jump. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you jump, like you, you, every four years is your chance to be a great jumper in the eyes of the nation. Yeah, and, and, to, and to jump for gold. <laughs> and to jump for gold, for glory, <laughs> for immortality. Yeah, how did he go? Oh, he got, got a silver. silver. In the 2000. Yeah. yeah. So, he was, so he was good. 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 In silver. Yeah, right. oh, wow. But listen, the 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 bright lights of fucking Australian long jump, maybe, you know, they weren't that bright. Now he's a cop. <laughs> but shout out to Jai. We thought it was worth yeah, asking about. Shout out, bro. I was named after you. There you, there you go. That's mad. Do you think, and I swear we'll bow the Jai, the Jai thing after this, <laughs> but do you think that's why you love tackling people, snapping people in half because your name's Jai? Yeah. Because my name's not know. Jai and I don't like doing it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I I don't want to be, when I have someone running at me, I don't want to be the guy that ends up on a highlight and get bumped, bu getting yeah. bumped off and things like that. So yeah. 
I I have the mindset every time I go out if I'm looking to tackle someone, it's either me or him. Yeah, I've come off. Don't get me wrong, I've come off second best a lot of times. Hmm. Uh, a few concussions here and there. Um, so I do enjoy the physicality of the game, but that's probably just as a kid growing up having an older sister and a younger sister fighting with them. Yeah. Um, that probably comes down to it. And I hated losing as a kid. I used to absolutely spit the dummy. Like at, say, if my older sister would beat me at PlayStation, shit like that, bro, I'd l- absolutely lose my crap. It's, every it's funny you should say that. Speak to. Every single person we interview says the same thing. They're all competitive animals. How does it go when you're mucking around at training, like playing ping pong or doing anything mildly competitive with the boys? It must be on for young and old. I'd say, like, say, you know, ping pong, even euchre. I don't know how to play Euchre, but I know it's a a card game, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a card game. There's obviously that, uh, the fun about it, and you can have a laugh, but like when when you're losing, you're half burning inside, but you can't show (laughs) it. Or when you start arguing with your partner and um, (laughs) things like that. Wheels are falling off. You're like, oh, fuck, I'm showing a bad side here. That's when you're you're into the boys and you say, bloody, look, boys, we've got them arguing. That's all we wanted. Here we go. Look (laughs) at them. They're arguing, so um, they, I suppose there is a competitive nature in anything you do, especially if you play rugby league. Like it's the toughest sport in the world, and we play a competitive game. So if you you're not a competitive person, um, there's, I have no doubts everyone in the NRL is a competitive person for sure. Yeah. Punters and dribblers, as always, we are brought to you by the best punting platform on planet Earth. There was a lot of peas in that one. Peas are good though. They are, and that is Ned's. They've been big supporters of dribble and yarn here at Hello Sport. They're also big supporters of punting and dribbling on About Even, the number one betting show on planet Earth. And they're big supporters of the About Even page in the Ned's. App. Which is good because I like being supported by the best. Mm. Having the best in your corner is a nice feeling. Yep. It's like having Customato with you if you were a boxer. Yeah. You know or, I mean? or Rocky's trainer. Who we don't know. No, what his name was. What is it? You got to get on from here, Rock. <laughs> That's what Ned's is to yeah. us as punters. Yeah. Now, I'll say this to Ned's, who we always punt with responsibly. I beat you. Yeah. I beat you on the weekend. Sorry, Ned's. You can't win them all. You can't win them and all. And you, you certainly didn't win on the beat weekend. Doof, 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 doof. We beat you. Um, Left, right, good night sort of stuff for yeah. Ned's over the weekend responsibly, but you understand what we're trying to say metaphorically, punters and dribblers. Good weekend for your dads over here. Now... As we said, if you would like to join the private Neds punting group on the Neds app, it is called About Even. The secret passcode is Dribbler. It's about 4,500 of you in there already enjoying it. Go on there. Come on in. Say good day. We'll see you there. Shout out to Neds. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. So you were with the Broncos and then... Did you ever play 20s, the Toyota Cup? Yeah, three years at the Bronx from um, 13 to 15. How was it? Did you enjoy that? Loved it. Yeah? It yeah. seemed like it was a cool thing for like young kids or it's like you had to tour around with the first grade side and stuff. Yeah, especially being at the Broncos too. So we travelled all the time. Mm. And as an 18, 19, 20-year-old, it was mad. Like we yeah. got to go around, travel – to Sydney, then Melbourne, you know, things like that and experience, I suppose, what it was like to to be a full-time NRL player. Obviously, mm. we had to work and train in the Arvo and and things like that, but it was – I loved it. It yeah. was you know, one of the time of my life. It was, it was, I guess, semi-professional and we could go and have fun and things like that. Um, but, yeah, it was mad. Like, I, I don't know why they sort of – I do understand – um, the financial part of things are probably why they got rid of it, but had the absolute time of my life, become really good mates with everyone in that side, and um, I loved it. I loved the twenty system. Yeah, was, was you crazy. was twenties always a curtain raiser for the first grade game? Yes, yeah, yeah, it was. So, and then that was good for the game as well. You know, people could go and see the next crop coming through yeah. um, the systems and, and things like that. Or at least see the players, the great players your club's about to let go, like Nico Hines. Not a big deal. We're Manly fans. Oh, yeah. Yes, there you go. Carry on. I just thought about it. Came into my I was mind. 15. They made the GF that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, my yeah. last year. There you yeah. go. We like to fight. Did you, do you have much to do with the first grade side when you are in 20s? Did you get to, like, like, hang out with them? Not really. Yes and no. There was things that you did... Um, with them, say, uh, well, you'd stay at the same hotel and that sometimes with them. So you'd see them around, which is pretty cool. Mm. People 
you idolise growing up and are all players seeing them walk around at the same hotel as you are and or you're always going to be playing before them was pretty cool. Like That was a special thing, I, I, I think, and something that they should probably look at bringing back. Because um, as a kid, you get it like – yeah, this massive boost when you know you're going to be playing before the NRL boys and you walk into the sheds in the 20s. I remember at Suncorp, like, there was two different parts. We had our 20 sheds, but you could sort of see through into the NRL sheds and you look around. And I was seeing the likes of the big dogs and Sammy Thiday, Corey Parker, um, the likes of those boys like Dar- Darbs, Darius Boy, yeah. um, boys who who had been there and one done comps that, one comms. Yeah. Play for Australia, played Origin, and I'm striving to do that. And I just see those boys next door. It was a pretty cool thing to be able to look at and mm. um, something to strive for. Were you captain of the side? Did you get captain of the 20 side or am I? I th- was for a fair, yeah, a little while there. They threw Ash Taylor, who was skip at the time, up into Cup, Queensland Cup. Yeah. So I think when he left, yeah, I was skipper from what's, then on. What's that like? In terms, because like obviously the twenties was good as you're saying, but I've heard some people like the criticism being like they were picking a lot of the players from twenties to come play first grade, as opposed to like going from twenties to then playing like Q Cup and shit against men and then progressing from there to the NRL. Like, is the standard? Did you like, is the standard massively different from like twenties Q Cup NRL? Yeah, especially in the NRL. I, I put it this way: I'd say twenties was definitely faster. Then Queensland Cup and Queensland Cup in trust super or whatever they call mm. it now was more physical than 20s mm. and then I feel as though once you get to the NRL it's just all the above fast as fuck it's hard. fast it's physical so like everyone's trying to kill you constantly yeah. everyone's so physically fit because it's our job we do it full time we train full time um, you know whereas 20s some boys were we were I was plumbing throughout the day and then have to come to training in, in the Plumbers. Arvo. And yeah, took Fuck yeah, yeah, playing with shit. I was yeah. playing with shit for three years. <laughs> so that was enjoyable. How's the plumbing game go? Are you did you get your what's it Ticket? called? Your, yeah. Uh, nah, license. No. A third year. Looking at trying to finish it off. Yeah. Cause I'm starting to get old now, realistically. And what are you twenty eight, yeah? Yeah, in the rugby league world. Um yeah. so I do want to try and get it done. Mm. Um and then Queensland Cup, like those boys were the same. They bloody had to go out and slave slave away and come mm. to training again. But in the NRL, it's our job. Like we're there in the morning and we're out. Um, it's a constant thing. So there is there was a massive difference. When I went into my first preseason full time, the end of twenty fifteen, after they just, you know, lost the grand final, uh, I definitely saw the big difference. Physically, mentally, um, and it was a massive step up. Did you go straight in from? Did you go straight into first grade? Did you play, spend time in Q Cup? Yeah, no. So I went from my first preseason. Um, I had no expectations of playing a. Like I, you didn't expect so- to make it. You mean? No, nah, the side. I, I knew I, I'd signed a two-year deal my last year at twenties full time, mm. and um, going into my first preseason, you look at the side that they had. I just made the grand final. I had no expectation of playing whatsoever. Eh? I just wanted to put myself in the best possible position to, I don't know, then the year after in 2017 to be able to hopefully get a chance. Mm. Um, and then, so I started off at Cup in 2016. And 12 weeks later, May, um, I actually made my debut at a double header against Manly Oof. at Suncorp. Did we pump you? No, we beat them. Fuck. So I was one from one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the um, double header they used to do, which was like the prelude to Magic Round. Yeah, yeah, but it was Manly's home game at Suncorp. We take go. every still, fucking every Magic the, Round. We take our home the, game it's there. It's still the, the last same case. Been fed by the Broncos. I think I might have <laughs> even gone to that game. We're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> there's a part of me that feels like I might have been there. Yeah, I might have been at your day, but they weren't traveling too well. Manly. No, they weren't traveling too well at that. Time. 2016. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was. It would have been about then. Back end of the decade of dominance. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, times were tough. Times are tough. Times were the Great tough. Depression, they called it. How was? Um, <laughs> but how'd you find? Do you have, have you got fond memories of that first game? How'd you go? Bit of a blur now. Bloody hell, it's eight years ago now, or nearly eight years ago. Crazy. Um, it's my eighth year in the top. I was going to say, I was just looking at here, 140 NRL games. Yeah, well, it's crazy. So 139 ago. <laughs> 
It was definitely a bit of a blur now, but I do remember the the, the thing that I remember most is running, going out to warm up, and I just went, "Holy fuck!" There's a lot of people here. <laughs> I, I'm I was nervous, um, but I'd I think Wayne probably the best thing he could have done was not have a jersey presentation for me. Really, which sounds weird, but. Um, he just didn't really make a big fuss of it, of it. And now that I look back, I reckon that was the best thing for me because I'm someone who, if I start thinking about shit, my head falls off, can fall off. Yeah, right. I'm not, not someone who's a good thinker, mm. someone who just calm, mellow, just go and do it kind of thing. Don't make a big deal. Yeah. So, do you think that was an intentional thing from him thinking, like, no, let's I don't not, know. like, do you know what I mean? Because he's, you, everything you hear about him is like he's this fucking wizard, you know, mentalist sort of master do you reckon it's something like intentional there or was it just more that you, that's what you weren't really doing that sort of stuff like you were jersey presentations weren't the done thing for debut on players yeah i don't i don't know i think so especially the way i found out too like it wasn't him who called me i found out and saw my face on a ins and outs thing at the broncos social media and i got a phone call as soon as i looked at it i was like oh i must be in the extended squad or whatever one of the um the manager, our manager, Scotty Zaski, called me and said, hey, mate, have you seen the news? And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I've just seen my head on a thing. That's about it. He goes, you'll be making your debut this week. And I just went, oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day I went into training and I'd obviously got told, I still didn't even know if I was playing because I hadn't heard it from the horse's mouth, like yeah. the coach, yeah, the yeah, actual yeah, coach. Yeah. yeah. And one of the assistant coaches, Steve Kearney, sorry, he, he came up to me and said, mate, come to the meeting. And I was like, all right, sweet. And he stood up and Wayne's like, oh, yeah, boys, fuck, forgot to tell you. Um, Jai will be making his debut this um, this week. And he said, I was going to give him a call, let him know, but I thought, nah, fuck him. I'll let him find out himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I look back now and I think oh, that was probably the best thing for me, just – uh, he didn't make a big deal of it, didn't mm. make a big fuss. He just let me be me and just work, figure it out for myself, basically. Yeah. Like a kid swimming, throw me in the deep end and say, if you can't swim, you're going to drown. So <laughs> um, I do think it was the best thing for me. But I do remember the running out of warm-up, the seeing all the heaps of people going, fuck, this is a nightmare. Kind of helped too. So when I ran on, we scored. So um, I could sort of relax and Darius Boyd come and grab me and said, hey, mate, enjoy this. To be the one you always remember, um, even though I forgot half of it. <laughs> um, it's worth mentioning that Broncos won thirty to six. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, yeah, Dave. Welcome. Thank you, we were Dave. well ahead before I come on, so <laughs> well ahead with yeah, about yeah. 30, 20, 25, 30 to go. So yeah. that, it made my job easier. Almost on. the perfect sort of Dave, situation yeah. to come on to. Yeah. It was just cool. got a try, no chance of losing. Oh fuck! Are we just sort of potter around, yeah. weakish manly side. Yeah, not ideal absolutely. for us. Absolutely, no, no, absolutely. Not ideal for us. Thanks for bringing that up, Dave. Appreciate that scoreline. <laughs> Thanks, mate. There, mate. Great That's update. Yeah. Go Manly. Yeah, go Manly. Go Manly. Would Manly you ever consider that. playing for Manly? Greatest club of all? Oh, not at the moment. No. Uh, Why not? The greatest club of all. No, I'm happy where I'm at. I love South. Um, I love the club. I love the people. Uh, there's obviously a lot going on at the moment, and um, tell us all about is, it. Which is not <laughs> ideal, but. Uh, look, I back every single one of those pe the people at that club, and um, I love them to death. So, um, but I I'm so happy at South. I love the club, love the people, as I said, and I'm happy here. I, yeah. I feel as though I feel as though that I never thought I'd be able to say this. I've found a home in Sydney. Mm. Um, being a Gold Coast boy, I've been at the Broncos and the Gold Coast. I thought there is – I think back now, I was thinking there's no fucking way I could go to Sydney. Did I, you I realise handle... Sydney was as fantastic as it was? Like nah. you, you didn't realise it was the best city on well, planet Earth? I feel as though when you don't really know Sydney, you only hear about the bad stuff, mm. which yeah. is, say, out west. Sorry to the guys out there, but <laughs> you just think like, there's no beaches around. You yeah, think, yeah, what yeah. the fuck would I want to go there? I'd be miserable out there. Mm. Yeah. And then I'd come down – and obviously made the decision to come down. And Ella, big Mark Ellison, he took me on the Eastern Suburbs tour and I just went, oh, <laughs> how good's this joint? <laughs> I am – because I, 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 I was nervous coming down thinking, am of I going to like it? And 
I wasn't worried about the footy part of things. I knew I was going to like that with the side we had. And um, I just thought, am I going to like living here? I don't know if I am. And then he took me on the Eastern Suburbs tour and I put, I just shook my head and went, I, rec- I reckon I'll manage for four years yeah. just quietly down here. <laughs> yeah. And obviously come down, got to experience Sydney, uh, learnt it as much as I could and now I've really found a home. Mm. I love it here. Love Fucking that. love it here. How's, it, how's the move from Redfern is it, to La Perouse? How's Hefron? that been? Hefron. Uh, what's Maroubra? Maroubra, yeah. Oh, uh, unreal. I just bought a joint in Maroubra okay. a few months back now and I'm a kilometre from training in a multi-million dollar facility. And You talking about your house now? <laughs> yeah. Multi-million dollar facility? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> nah, what? Well, it's just not a bloody... Uh, that's, that's, the that's the thing that got me about yeah, Sydney. That's the thing that got me about the prices. Like, yeah. I live in basically... Grateful, grateful. It's of course. nice, very modern. Yeah. But a shoebox, essentially, <laughs> uh, for, for an absolute motta. <laughs> yeah. Absolute motta. Um, but it's a growth area, that Maroubra. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mate, <laughs> I'm right near training. Yeah. Uh, I love the vibe around Maroubra where it's – feel like it's more like the Gold Coast than anywhere down here. Everyone's more relaxed, mm. low-key, whereas you start making your way north to your Coogees and Bondi's, everything starts more to get heavy a bit hectic. More heavy and bustling and – that's yeah. not me. I'm a very relaxed, easygoing guy who likes to. Nighty would have probably told you. Um, I love to sit on the couch. Apparently, <laughs> love sitting on the couch. Love being at home. Yeah. Got two dogs. Um, love taking them out. But yeah, I fucking I love Sydney, man. You love it. Oh, I yeah, love we'll it. Clip that up and send that to every fucking send a shout out to Campy. Um, I wanted to. I wanted play to talk about South. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll play that during Origin. <laughs> um, but going from Brisbane back to the Gold Coast. What was the reason there? Was that just Gold Coast sort of? Because you're a Gold Coast boy originally, yeah. right? Like, did they just come in with a big dick offer? No. Or is it like you're getting don't, shoved out? How's that sort of go? Don't get me wrong. It, so the Broncos at that time were stacked. Mm. You know, in the pack, you had Josh Maguire. Um, well, not a hooker, but you had Andrew McCulloch, um, Adam Blair, Matt Gillette. Uh, yeah. Alex Glenn, Semi Thiday, mate. It's it was stacked, Corey yeah. Parker, and <clears throat> it was more the opportunity for me. Yeah, I was lucky enough that the Titans had given me given me an extra year, so they gave me a three year deal, whereas the Broncos was only a two. So obviously, it was more money. Mm. Was it the, obviously the third year helped, but over the two years, was it much more? No, not really. Uh, it was still it was still more definitely, but it was more the opportunity. To, to being able to live out my dream and play regular first grade yeah. where it was more, I didn't know if I was going to be in the side one week with the Broncos where I knew I could go down back home, fresh start um, and hopefully cement a starting spot and had a really good preseason. My first year at the Titans and started in the front row in the big eight, hundred kilo front rower starting in the eight. And um, as 2018 went on, um, halfway through the year like made my origin debut which I, I had no it was like me in 2016 playing NRL yeah had no expectations of that all I wanted to do was lock down a starting spot enjoy my footy have fun and then we'll see what happens but it, everything just sort of tumbled over and halfway through the year I'm getting a call from um, Kevy Walters saying I'm going to make my origin debut and I'm going fuck what is going on man like I really think back and I had to pinch myself every day going, I'm literally living out my dream right mm. now and I don't know how I've done this. I've absolutely <laughs> bluffed my way into an origin site. Yeah, <laughs> so, but do you, so that's like, do you feel like your form warrant, like when you're in that position, like you're shocked about getting picked, right? But do you think like, well, I'm actually playing well enough to be in this side or are you like, Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, I was thinking Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Like, the first day of camp, I rocked up, man, and I saw Billy Slater and G- Greg Inglis. And yeah. Went, what the-? yeah. I looked around. I went, what the fuck am I doing here? This is <laughs> this is like surreal. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just still – I still pinch myself that I've, I've been able to now, um, I suppose, play NRL, play Origin. And yeah, it's, I'm so grateful and um, I do love what I do and I'm so – happy and glad that i've been able to do it so far but um you know it's got a lot to i suppose achieve before 
I can retire a happy man. Mm. What's uh, what's it like when you get into an Origin camp? Like, do they sit you down and, and watch like old sort of Queensland Pump Origin videos shit. and sort of get you going? Um, like the really. history of yeah, the well, state you and learn, all that sort of shit. You learn about it. You learn about the state, the history, and, and what's going on, and and things like Arthur that. Arthur Beaton. Yeah. Um. So he was a big. Arthur was a big like a big reason um on last year's series and what he's done for queensland and, and things like that that was kind of like a motivation in last year's camp and um i suppose rolling to this one you always remember those things and 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 stuff but um you do learn about the history and then you see all the past players that come in and um talk and have their say on what it was like playing for queensland and and stuff like that it's a, it's pretty cool and as i've said man i, I still pinch myself Thinking, what the fuck? How am I here? Yeah. How am I here right now? And I'm very lucky that I've been able to do that. What's it like having played with your current coach in Origin? <laughs> weird. Is it weird? Is he the same? Oh, Is he the no. same as he was when he was a player yeah. to now? I've said that. Because we sort of feel like he talks a bit like a bush poet these days <laughs> yeah. uh, as yeah. a coach. You know, he's sort of like the way he sort of speaks. In the, and we love, like, we're big Billy Slater fans. Not during Origin time, obviously, but like... The way he speaks about like Queensland and passion, and you know we're fucking we're people that have fires and floods. And, <laughs> and it sounds got- like it's come from New South Wales. <laughs> yeah, fucking know this. <laughs> um, oh, behind behind you know a training and that he was he was like he was uh, as he was playing. Mm. I remember the first training session very vividly on him training, and I was just in awe. Gone, this bloke, he's coaching. He's coaching from the back, like how he's making everyone's job easy for him. Yeah. Um, I remember just going, shaking my head, going, fuck, how good's this guy? And I wonder why he he was the player he was. Uh, he breaks the game down so well. I don't think people really understand how, how well he breaks the game down and um, how much confidence he gives you as a player, knowing you have a set in stone game plan that all you have to do is go out and play your role and do your job and – the result will take care of itself and showed over the past two years since he's coached. So mm. yeah, helps. Yeah. And is he, is it, do you feel like you have to behave differently towards him? I mean, I guess when you came in, you were young anyway, so he was sort of senior, but like, you know, do you feel like you have to act in a different way around him when he's a coach as opposed to when he's a player or is he just, is he pretty cruisy? He seems like a no, cool he, dude. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think he's just cruisy. You don't really have to act any different to what it was like playing with him. So um nah not at all what's a buntu mean i am because we are okay just checking <laughs> just checking just checking. just checking in you mate i'm just checking i was actually invested in that <laughs> what is it so like that was that's like that was like your, your motto right for the yep. year yep um it was our motto um it was just something um that i suppose they brought in because he's probably said this before but i feel like being a queenslander um it's much more bigger than just the team. It's mm. the whole state uh, and things. So um, I suppose you can take it how you want it, but I am because we are is more, um, to me, it's because we're a whole. It's an us thing. It's not just an individual thing. And um, so, yeah. Do you? Do you, yeah, you I was going to say, do you look at New South Wales and just go, <laughs> well, the exact same fucking question. you don't get it? You don't get it. <laughs> you just, they just don't get it. <laughs> is that like, is do you, I don't know you guys see it? I don't know. I, like, when you look at us, what do you see? Do you see, like, you just like, you fucking losers don't get it. Uh, no, it's not that. It's more that, um, I think it's more, it's not that they just don't get it. Or well, maybe they don't. Fucks me. I, I really don't know. But maybe it's just because we're good. Mm, uh, we're a good team. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Can't, but you've, but you've rolled out no bad one, teams. You've rolled out. You've rolled out like less good teams and got the job done. Over <laughs> yeah. us, you know what I mean? Like that's where like the twenty 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 the twenty twenty <laughs> worst side all time. <laughs> still off. <laughs> still you know still what? <laughs> I reckon the bloody the New South Wales media absolutely they fueled it, fueled a fire in us that oh, there was absolutely. I remember Wayne coming in before game three, uh, or no, sorry, after the game two loss, and the next day. We, we had a meeting, we did review on that and got on the beers after and he just said, there's no fucking way we're losing this next game. <laughs> and then the media had come out and started saying that this was the worst team in 40 years, et cetera. And you, we, be, like, we believed Wayne. We're like, there's no fucking way we're losing this game. We're at Suncorp. Yeah. 
these mongrels outside are bagging us. There's no way we're losing. And we didn't. Like, mm. we, we just went out there with absolutely nothing to lose. And I feel like the media really shot them in the foot, eh? Yeah. Time. We that like would, doing that down here. Wouldn't be the feels. first time. <laughs> what do you? How do you feel when you see someone like Cameron Munster just lighting it up? Turn it on? Yeah, yeah. just oh, turn it on. Yeah, it's pretty like, cool. You like, must chub up. You don't, yeah, <laughs> uh, when, when you're in the moment and playing, you don't really appreciate it until, say, you come off and re-watch the game. You yeah. go, fuck, man, how good was he? Like, yeah. Probably nearly single-handedly won us that game. Yeah, well, that's the opinion I'm of. In 2020. Mm. Um, Ridiculous. Harry Grant was pretty good as well. Yeah, Harry Grant quietly. was good. He was good. Uh, was that his first game? Try. Yes, he was, yeah, it was his, his debut. first game. Yeah, was his debut. Sick of Queenslander debuts. As well, well, that was the that was the time. <laughs> yeah, all Queenslander good debut. Stuff. Yeah, I know. Monsters They're all the same. Fucked. But that was that <laughs> game. was good. That was that game where they won that. Where we were in the Uber that day and we we're talking to the Uber driver and we were like, "Mate, we're gonna fucking hump those Queenslanders tonight." And he just goes, "Just boys, you haven't seen enough winters." <laughs> we're like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "You just you haven't seen enough winters, boys. I've seen this before. We're in trouble." And we we're like, "Shut up, mate." Yeah, and we go get fucking done and we were looking at each other like, oh, we haven't seen <laughs> enough winters bro <laughs> fuck like our favourite saying now as well so, so, yeah. but he just said it so matter of fact because so, I was yeah. I'd had, we'd already had a couple of beers and I was just lipping up like, on the way to Caxton no, no, we're no going we were to, in Sydney. We were just going to a pub to watch it. Oh, okay, and so, I was so. like, mate, look look how many weapons we've got in the duffel bag, crapping on and on and on. He just didn't, didn't say much at all. And then at the end he goes, boys, you haven't seen enough winters. We're going to get pumped tonight. And we're like, mate, there's no way. Have you seen their side? Anyway, we'll pulled by the media. Um, we lose that one. We, we lose, lose that series. one. Series Cherry Evans holds the fucking trophy. Do up. you just do you just get <laughs> off? I, I'm just I'm curious. Do you do you come off the ground after a win like that, just smiling at each other, going, just another one? So that was my first Origin Series win, mm. and I had so I just I had the biggest smile on my face, not because of the whole media shit, but because we had won and. I couldn't believe it, and I just knew I knew we'll go on a Byron too, and <laughs> I, knew, oh, I knew majority of the points were coming, and they did. And I just, oh, as soon as I got in the sheds, I grabbed the four X tinny and just went mad. Because um, <laughs> that's right, because it was after the season, so yes. it was like the season was done. So yep. it was just that's actually almost the best series when you could have. You right? could just oh, come out and you're done. You're done for the year. Yeah, it was straight in like an, to an Origin Mad Monday. And that was, was that when Munster came back in and he was like the most hungover man in the, on the well, he'd planet? He won the comp, just came went, in yeah. and then went back oh, out. What a year for him. The, yeah, I know. The Melbourne yeah. boys. That yeah, yeah, they yeah, just yeah. won the comp and um, had to come into camp or whenever it was. Look at that photo of him in the tank. He was the dog. He wanted to be there. Yeah. He definitely wanted to be there. Yeah. Just more come photos. off with a mad smile going, fuck, I just can't wait. It was just one of my first Origin series at Suncorp. As soon as he got in the sheds and it was on started throwing four X tinnies up and down on Alfie Langer and oh uh, yeah, it was a good. How's good how's Wayne in that moment? Oh, big strut on him, chest out. <laughs> <laughs> People are bagging him, yeah. uh, backs against the wall, and Wayne O's pulled pulled off another miracle. Apparently, um, he was really good. Um, he was he just he made that camp so fun and so enjoyable that. I think that's what's got us over the line, just the way Wayne sort of um, – he organised things throughout the camp for us to have fun, to be together. We had obviously been in the bubble where we weren't allowed to do anything, mm. uh, which was weird. But he just made it fun and enjoyable for us and it reflected on the field. Yeah. Um, what, like golf and cars? Yeah, like golf, things like that, like getting – um, big believer of a bonding session. Yeah, yeah right. Quietly. We banned it this year um, in, in New South Wales camp. Did they? It was alcohol free. Oh, okay. Mm. There you go. Mm. Well, <laughs> big believer. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> I'm not a big believer in the bonding session, but like he made it fun. He let us yeah. be men and we got to do what we wanted and uh, we had games nights majority every night because we couldn't fucking do anything. Yeah, mm. uh, we did get we were, we were were able to play golf and go to the beach, but we had oh, basically stay in a huddled group like bloody f yeah. flock of birds or <laughs> flock of sheep uh, with a security guard taking us down to the beach and no one could come near us. He's like telling people to fuck off. Hey, hey no, 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 don't go near. <laughs> <laughs> People have obviously seen us like Queensland kid on and the yeah. MAD up there in Queensland for yeah. the Queenslanders and wanting to get photos and that. So we had to keep our distance from people walking. 
<laughs> that must like have that, been man. very, very weird. Now it was bull. It was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. you just know what happened. Twenty one. Yeah. Like, look back now, Jesus. It was absolutely ridiculous, yeah. like that bubble situation. But I understand at the time it was the unknown with COVID. Well, and, the world was ending at the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so it's such an unknown thing that. They had our best, you know, interests at heart with, you know, medical for medical reasons. But now COVID's the flu. Oh, fuck, oh, it's no. crazy. You look mm. back now. It's wild, isn't it? Twenty twenty. Wow, what a wild. year! It feels weird. It's all blurred into one as well. Like I don't really know what the fuck happened. What is um? What's like? Because Liam told us a funny story, Nighty, that like um about one time at South where. Uh, you oh, guys got Penrith flogged, thing. right? Yeah. And then he comes in, whips his shirt off, and he's just fucking yeah. It was like it was. It was it just it, you know, I guess having him as an Origin coach, you had him for a bit at Brisbane as well. But like, what's Wayne like? You, you do you get on with him quite well? What's your relationship like with him? Yeah, I I, I definitely do. Um, I loved I love the big Wayne Oss. He's just so fun to be around. And um, Nighty's obviously told that story where he come in, shirt off, mm. Dax down, and I don't do. I don't, I don't know know if do you told us to Dax down. Don't know if he did. I'm not Dax down. He wasn't nude, but no. But I mean, undies. you could you could undies show. Get the inference of a testicle or a penis, <laughs> which would be nice. You know, if he's got the budgies on. Saggy, big saggy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tripping <laughs> over him. He um he he's just so he's such a good person to be around, and um so lucky that I was coached by him. Just yeah, he's fucking such a cool person, and. I was on the phone with him and Nighty. Um, I was with Nighty at the time and he called Wayne and spoke to him then. And I think some, someone was telling me, um, I can't even remember who it was, he said that we should go up to his farm in the off season. So uh, could really? be, yeah, it could be on his farm in the off season. Wow. Yeah, see what Hectic. Where's his farm? Not that we're going to come along. Fuck. Well, well, I got no idea. Have you we'll been there before? Is it like, is it some monster? No, no, I've never been there before. Yeah, so okay. I'd love to go away. Eh? Is there room for two more? Wow. <laughs> We got to get Wayne on here somehow, some way. I don't think it's possible. I know he doesn't really do media, and he'd be like, no. "Who the fuck are these two pricks?" But like, <laughs> no, he you know, wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. So, he like, wouldn't so it wouldn't carry it. much weight for like we've had Jai and, and Nighty. Yeah, Jai and Nighty. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> all, seen the um, was it the Fox the Fox League thing that we did? Was yeah. that you were pranking him? Well, funny enough, I it was meant to be Wayne and I on the Fletch and Hindy show. Yeah, but. Wayne being Wayne, he went, fuck, I'm not going to the media shit. Like, there's no way. Yeah. And I remember walking in and I saw the sheet of paper and it said like, my name and Wayne on Fletch and Hindy at this certain time. And I was like, Wayne's not coming. So I walked in. I, Wayne's not here. So I sat down by myself and they'd obviously like, well, we'll get someone. Nighty was a perfect fit because he's a wanker and <laughs> likes to talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then he tossed up the, the whole let's ring him. And then, uh, I don't know, you obviously saw it. Yeah, yeah, I saw Fuck it. off, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you meant to be here for the Fletcher and I? Fuck off, Liam. So you're trying to, mate. <laughs> That's very funny. Did he, was he instrumental in wooing you to the Rabbitohs? Yeah, he was. There? JD was as well. Right. I'd work with JD in 2017 as well. And um, those things definitely were in consideration. And Russell Crowe, did he get on the blower? Oh, that was, that was pretty cool too. I don't know if they would jam me up, so... <laughs> don't know if they'll jam me up but anyway Shane Richardson come to the Gold Coast to meet me um, I was at my best mate's mum and dad's house and he met me there and I don't know if he was talking shit but he said I was just on the blower to Russell and he's like hey mate are you going to meet Giles I was thinking fucking the gladiators calling for me <laughs> holy how good is that <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was a that was a plus and then Wayne JD and uh, the side as well side the uh, stack side winning part um i just thought we could win and we had a really good year that year apart from the last game of the year which fucking still hurts but it was more those three things taking into consideration pros and cons of everything there's actually a lot that sort of goes into a massive decision like that mm, um, for me to leave home leave somewhere where i was comfortable um where you know, I loved the boys. We weren't getting the results. And then with Sam Burgess retiring, the opportunity sort of arose and South come in late. And I like looked and went, fuck, all right, I've really got to sit down now and and weigh up my options and where I think, you know, I'm best suited. And ultimately, 
live out the dream and that's to win a comp and yeah i did and i come down and those sort of three things were massive influences on why i come down mm. are you sitting down with like your folks and shit trying to like go through it all or are nah. you just like in terms of like what well, doesn't have to be your parents right but just anyone are you like dude someone trying to help you make it, the sense of it all or make the decision or is it just you by yourself i had advice from a lot of people um my best mates mum and dad or he their old man he um was involved with recruitment with mm. the roosters and that when i was growing up and then my manager had obviously given me some advice but my parents that not really i think that's more because i'm a grown man and i'm they let me make my own decisions yep. so um they'd obviously wanted to know what i was doing and and whatnot and was supportive either way so uh, and I'm not someone who gets homesick. I don't really get homesick. It's an hour flight back to the Gold Coast, yeah. so it's not like I'm fucking travelling too far yeah. or mm. and things like that. But to be, I made the decision myself and solely myself. And I sat down. People aren't probably going to believe it because they think they think I'm an idiot and I'm t I'm dumb. But <laughs> I sat down and started weighing up every single option with the three clubs, which Tigers. Titans and South. Shocked you didn't go to the Tigers. Was there how many co how many cons were there for the <laughs> for Tigers? The tigers. <laughs> well, well, I think <laughs> I must just have been a few. Yeah, why are you asking how many pros really? Yeah, 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 look, yeah. Like, looking, back, <laughs> looking back, I think I went. No, nah, I'm not going to do this with all three clubs. I'm going to pick two, and I went. All right, sorry, Tigers. <laughs> it's home or Wayne and JD. Yeah. So I went these two, and I sat down and solely made the decision myself and it took me ages like it like how long months months wow. sleepless nights wow thinking you know, i'm someone who tries to not let things outside of footy um worry him and and things like that but fuck it worried me having to tell uh the titans that i was leaving and i'd said to them i don't want to leave this is my home this is where i've grown up you'd already said that <laughs> yeah i'd said it down the Tough. media and that was going out f it was going off for months bras and i was <laughs> i know like, i know i said yeah. i know i remember said, what i said I remember i said about like myself, never wanting to leave no, that was said under duress <laughs> yeah i fucking changed my mind and having to call justin and having to call because out of respect i didn't want them to find out through the media i'm mm. a big believer of a respect of respect and telling the people um at the club before anything had come out that i'm going to sign with another club mm. so i had to call justin fucking had to call mal um tough conversation yeah absolutely mate i was crying i was crying on the phone mm. Was, how do they react in that situation? Oh, how like, do you, I don't know. Are they, is it like when you're breaking up with someone, they're like quiet? <laughs> are they like, crying yeah. too? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they weren't crying. But, um, I don't know. I, have you ever been on the phone with someone crying before? What's it? Like? Probably, dude, but not for a while. Yeah. I get it. Like, I, I'm, like hearing someone else cry isn't necessarily going to make me cry. You just it, It's awkward, isn't if it? I'm getting dumped, though. What, yeah. if, what getting do I dumped, do? I might start crying. But then I'd obviously called um, Wayne and JD and said, I'm coming. See you next year. Did it feel good once you made the decision? Or did you still oh, feel like scat about it while you were like playing for the boys? Nah, the relief. The massive relief on my shoulders. And then I'd spent, made the decision end of 2019 and I was still with the Titans at 2020. Um, so you still played the fo another full year? Sorry. Yes. Yep. yep. Weird? So, Weird nah, or like I, it wasn't because I was there for the two years and then I was really f good mates with everyone and I remember during the pre-season because I made my decision in December, so we were out at pre-season then and there was all this talk that I was going to see us and whatnot. Mate, the amount of heckling. I don't know if you've been into, say, an NRL environment, but we are honestly like a bunch of high school kids. Mm. It is so immature. Yeah, well, that's everyone office, takes I'd Everyone say, yeah. takes a piss out of everyone. Yep. I suppose it's just a lot of grown men who – Majority have, say, coming into a first grade system out of high school and you just – it's like being at a high school. You don't grow up. Yeah. yeah. It's like Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> I'd walk into the gym and the boys at the Titans – Ryan James was was good at this. Jared Wallace, who was one of my good mates up there, they start playing the glory, glory to South Sydney blaring in the gym. <laughs> I was like, fuck, this is awkward. Like, And I'm someone who tries to not give them anything, but yeah. I'm like, stop doing it like coaches are upstairs <laughs> listening to it obviously it's out in the media i'm going fuck what do i do here playing glory glory to south sydney had you told the coaches yet 
When nah, this it? is all the when all the process was going right. on. Oh, so, so this is still, before you've even made your decision. Yeah, this oh, is before I'd even made a decision. That's <laughs> hectic. So Ryan James and Jared Wallace are probably a big part too. Why? You want to play that song and ingrain it in my head. <laughs> yeah. It was quite catchy. Glory, uh, glory yeah. to That's great. It's like, fuck it, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking out of Fuck you guys. How do the boys react when you tell them? Are they all right? Is yeah, it's no, all, they were it's good. all business. Uh, they, yeah, they were good. Like, uh, obviously, you couldn't give phone call to 30 blokes so no. i'd put it in the whatsapp group well you could have <laughs> well that's a lot of phone calls <laughs> oh time is of the essence but uh i just put it in whatsapp and said hey boys before anything comes out i just wanted to let you guys know that i'll be um signing my contract today to go to south because i hadn't signed anything yet but i was literally on my way to go sign the contract and I'd actually said to Jared Wallace that year... I'll never leave this place. Well, I'd said to him, don't you... Because he was up for negotiations of contract. I said, don't you fucking leave. <laughs> don't you leave. End of the year. I'm gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye-bye. Um, but Jay Wall understood. He was... He's like, mate, I definitely... I totally understand. Like, mm. like, they weren't filthy. They... There was it was just more the heckling and bit of banter. You're a, yeah, you're a fucking dog going to South. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're a wanker. Yeah, it's or, like listen, kind of play finals. Yeah, all the banter of oh thank fuck you're leaving. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. wait to get you out of here. How long do you have left? <laughs> can't wait for the end of the season. Things like that. So, but they were good. They took it really well. I see when you're playing because sometimes like you'll play prop right, and as yeah. you said, like you debut. You say you debuted for the Titans of prop. Yes. Like you seem like a fucking the size of a back rower though. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Do you do you, uh, do you prefer to play back row? Um, you don't really give a shit. You just want to play. I don't really care. Yeah, I don't really care where I play as long as I'm on the field and, and things like that. I do enjoy playing in the middle, mm. um, and playing my role in the middle. Like my role is pretty easy. I, I can just sort of be the battering ram in the outside because we've got the best ball playing lock in the comp. Camo. Yeah, you guys are right. So, oh, I understand my role in that in that part where we've got Camo. I don't need to really pass the ball. I'd rather let him do that and me just be the battering ram and um, say play fast, hard, quick play the ball and let Camo and the boys out wide do what they do. Mm. Yeah, find your front. Man. Um, exactly. We'll do my best. Oh, I'm f that's me. I'm fucking 100 kilos playing in the front row. You get boys who 110 plus, 115 plus, some of them. Yeah, they, they're so, not. They're, you're not getting 120 plus anymore these days, though, Tommy, are you? Tommy B. He's 120? 126. No Is way. He really? 25, yeah, 26. Fuck, I know they're wow. massive. Like, you forget kind of because when you're watching the game and then you Dense see him, you're too. like. Dense. Yeah, he's massive, eh? Density. He's who's, the most, boy. who's the most unpleasant prop to tackle or footy player generally? I hate, I hate it, and I saw that he just re-signed to for like another three or four years. Fucking Nelson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. He is one of the largest human beings yeah, I've ever ridiculous. seen in my life. I've said to him a couple of times in the scrum, I was like, bruh, honestly, this is unfair. Like, <laughs> you're so big, man. Just... And then there was this talk about him going to Union. And I was going, go. Get him out just of here. Just go. Oh, please, <laughs> please go. And then I'd saw he, seen he... Resign. I went, fuck. <laughs> Here another we go. four years of this Here's shit. Here's another four years of this shit. And then especially because us at South, um, we usually get Melbourne early in the year too when you haven't really found your rhythm and you're still trying to – you feel like an idiot trying to tackle people and you're trying to find that rhythm of how to play the game again. And we get Melbourne early, and I go, oh, fucking here we go. Look, here we go. Nelson's up. Let's go, boys. Yeah, the yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Go and put one on him. <laughs> and now they're starting to put him out in the back row. And it's not fair. It's not fair for Harps. He's massive, dude. What's his <laughs> dimensions, Dave? Can you just get those up? Yeah. Uh, He'd have to be two two metres. He's, so he's 200 centimetres, six foot seven, and he's only 115 kilos, though. Jesus. That's I mean, a lie. I say only. That is a lie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, I trust we, the man that's Wikipedia. Him. That's Wikipedia. I reckon that's from. Well, let's see if your let's see if it's got your stats right, and we can compare. Yeah. What, so what do you you'd know. when you say hundred kilos? Well, at the moment, I'm hundred and two. Uh oh, this has got you at hundred and one kilos, one eighty nine centimeters, six foot two. Yeah, I'm a one eighty nine, but I'm hundred and two at the moment. Oh, okay, I think it's close enough. Do you ever you ever feel like bulking up? 
Putting a bit more on? No, nah, the game's yeah. too fast. Too fast, yeah. Too fast. Um, and I'm happy, like, I'm happy to be, I'd probably rather be 9,900 kilos because mm. um, of how fast the game's getting, how fast it is. And um, I don't feel as though if I'm going to lose a couple of kilos, I'll, I'll lose that strength. Yeah. Um, and I've always played under my weight anyway, Anyway, so um, it won't worry me. What do you so bench? All time best. Yeah, yeah all time. All time best one was single. at the Titans before AC problems. I did one rep for 160 kilos. 160. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I was um, don't have the glutes. Horrible squatter, but my best squats was one for 170. I'm pretty sure. Yes, you're talking to two. 170. Horrible. Squats. Oh, we're we're we're, we're, we're currently pulling. trying to improve our squats. What about pull ups? Chins, pull ups, not chins. Chins are front. Chins hands. for pussies. For anything like kilos wise, weight. No, no, no. Just like how many, many could you do? For, you're not catching me dead doing those. You're not. You're not seeing. You're not honestly. You I did three today, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, there might have been a bit of help me. on the third. <laughs> you know, the fourth I got help on. Yeah. My yeah. shoulders are that crook at the moment. Like AC problems. I don't chin up anymore. I just do um, narrow grip pull down okay. instead of the chins. What the fuck's that? I mean, I can probably guess. So yeah, that worked out. That you know, like lap pull down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a thing, the rope or whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's not the rope, but oh, it's, it's like got a the bar. Handles. Yeah, it's like yeah, bars yeah, yeah. and you pull it down like that. Okay. Only because my shoulders are absolutely. Maybe cool. I need to start doing some narrow grips. Who? What's the What's the biggest bench you've ever seen in the gym, footy player? Greg. Um, what really? Greg English. Marju. Oh, oh, Greg Marju. Marju. I was going to say. Yes, Greg Marju. Really? He's a big man. Yeah. Um. He's yeah. He's wide. He's wide. He's strong, bro. He. It would have been 205 kegs, 210, two, in between 200 and 210 kilos. And I remember going, fuck, <laughs> he's going on right now. Um, so, yeah, he's the strongest I've seen. That's not an environment that we do well in, Tom. You know, no, well, look, we're not, we're not athlete guys. We're not weights guys. That's for fucking shit. I'm with you at the moment. I'm no good at the moment. Mate, I'm yeah. looking, I've been admiring your calves today going, fuck, that guy's got some calves on. Look They're not made for lifting. They definitely aren't made for lifting, I'll tell you that. They're made for. Do you? Are you are they made for holding up socks? We're talking to Millie Boyle. She's like, if you hold, you wear your socks up, you're like a loser these days. I was like, I thought socks up was the cool thing to do. Yeah, I've always done it. Um, only say if my socks are falling down from a tackle and things like that. But when I do get time, I always pull them up. I have to. Like, I feel like that's a rugby league thing to yeah. do. I completely and agree. Yeah. Actually, it oh, it does. It shits me when people have their socks down. Mm. Like this shit, I don't know what it is. We have some respect for the jersey. Yeah, yeah. That's how I'd say it. Absolutely. Mate, I think it was Broncos 20s. We had a rule. Your socks had to be up. There you go. Set the Your socks had to be up. Um, And obviously, once boys got into the game, they'd pull them down. Because it's it's more a superstitious thing, I feel. Uh, Socks down. But I've always had socks up. Are you a superstitious man yourself? Superstitious? Uh... I'm going to say yes. I have a certain sort of routine that I go through uh, before every game. Um, what are you doing? Or is it like secret? You can't talk about it. No, nah, it's not a secret. I don't or is really it just care. cracked? It's, it's, fuck, it's pretty weird. Come on. <laughs> pretty weird. Spit it out. So <laughs> we get to the game and I'll, I'll be listening to music, obviously, and I'll put my skins and my warm-up top on and that'll be it. Um, well, before then, sorry, I go jump in the ice bath to wake my legs up. Wake them up. Yeah. Or the pool before we leave. So it's either one of them into skins thing. And then 37 minutes before warm up. Don't ask me why. 37, though. It has know. to be 37. Yeah. 37 minutes before warm up. That's when I put my shorts and socks on. Right, right leg sock first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I am weird now. <laughs> and then. I go through a stretch routine that I have, um, calves, hammies, uh, calves. Wait, I've absolutely fucking Jesus Christ! Forgot. This is mate. This is maybe why you guys want to game. Calf for stretch, him. hammy stretch, <laughs> hip flexor, glute, groin. There you go. Yep. Nice. Go and um, hip flexor in there. Good to good to hear. Yep. And then I'll take my warm up shirt off. And I'll like fold it in half and put it on my locker with it having with it has my last name on the back and my playing number. And I'll just have a look and go, all right, this is what I'm fucking playing for. 
uh, my name, my Rabbitohs number. I'll have a look at it. And I'll go get my pads on, yeah. And then jersey on. I always warm up in my jersey. I don't warm up in a warm-up tee because obviously you see a lot of boys in warm-up mm. that wear their warm-up tee. So I've always got my jersey on. And then I'm raring to go, ready to go. That's way more superstitious than you let on initially. You're like, mm, am I superstitious? Yeah, like, not mate, really. Like I suppose a you could say I am. Three hour fucking superstitious. Yeah. Oh, so after the, the stretching 37 too, minutes before is very specific. Yeah. After yeah. the uh, stretching routine, I go and grab the black electrical tape and go put my boots on. And yeah, then yeah. Tape, tape the fuck out of them. Yeah, I'm a bit old school. I was black tape on the um, laces yep. and socks up. So I'm. Pretty old school. Yeah, have are, most, old school have most boys got super, superstitions, do you think? Or is it all pretty hush hush? I reckon they do it inside. Yeah. I don't reckon some boys would probably say it because it might be a superstitious thing that they don't want anyone to yeah. know about. But I don't really care, to be honest. Fuck anyone can. I'm a pretty open person and I tell probably too many things to the boys that they don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, wanted to. What's like. What's a grand final week like when you're getting ready for it? Well, it was during COVID, so oh, that's right. Didn't, I, I experienced the, the COVID yeah, grand final week, yeah, 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 um, where we weren't really allowed to come into contact with people. But but but, but people went to the game, didn't they? You didn't play it in front of no one, did no, you? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah so yeah. people they put up a fence around the field, right? Pretty sure. And um, we had a lot of people, not a lot of people, but we had a fair few people um, during the week come to our training sessions and and things like that. Um, a lot of media commitments that you don't usually do throughout the week. Usually there's only a handful of boys that just have to do the one media session, mm. but it was constant. Like we had to go everywhere through that. Um, we didn't get to do the, I don't think we did, we didn't do the grand final lunch. Yeah. They have something. Yeah, so was it a breakfast yeah. or was it a breakfast, lunch? Breakfast, lunch, yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever it is. Didn't do that. Um, so you had a weird one. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. It was definitely different. We we're on the Gold Coast as well. Played at Suncorp mm. and probably the first and probably only grand final to be played at Suncorp. Yeah. In front of a 75, 80% capacity crowd. Yeah. Because it wasn't allowed full 100% mm. crowd. Um, Worked that capacity. out. Worked that out. Anyway. Yeah. Which is weird. But it was a mad week. Like yeah. It was still pretty cool um, knowing that we had the opportunity playing a grand final in probably the toughest competition um, in the world or one of the cuff, toughest competitions in the world it's still pretty cool and then to be coached by Wayne Bennett in the grand final but we fucking lost so that sucks <laughs> that sucks that's tough is that what's like when that whistle goes or the siren goes are you just heartbroken just devastated heartbroken yeah, yeah I was especially the way I went out um, I'd bring on the field first carry bang gone knocked out oh that's right I forgot uh, so fuck do you just fucking hate Penrith. Like, is that like the t uh, you know? Do you, it, firstly, because of that game, but like, is there a club that you that you know you love to hate, or is it because you've been to a couple? It's sort of not really a thing. I wouldn't say hate, but you definitely dislike them. I think majority of that reason is because they've been so good. Yep. Yes. They're winners, mm. and everyone fucking hates winning. I mean, everyone hates losing. Yeah. And everyone hates winners, and they're winners, mm. and rightly so. They've, you know. Won the past two competitions in a row pretty convincingly too. Mm -hmm. um, they've been you know, the last one, especially. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And everyone sort of had said that oh, they're losing a lot of players. They're going to be no good. Can't really see them being um, what they were, but they still are. Mm. They're still winning and convincingly, and are rightly so. Favourites to win the premiership again this year. And it's not that I hate them because of um, the people or, no, no, or no, anything no, no. like that, yeah. mate. I would say I dislike them because they're fucking winners. Yeah. And <laughs> I hate losing. Yeah. And they're winning. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you hate playing them too just because how good they are. They're, they're so they're competitive. They do not give up and they just fucking refuse to go away. And respect to him, massive respect to him. You must love Manly then. Manly, go Manly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was, everyone doesn't. Apparently, no one likes Manly. No, no, everyone, everyone hates loves Manly, to right? hate Manly. Yeah, yeah, which is sweet. That's fine. The, the big sign. Oh, we man. hate you too. Both Manly fans. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, how did you meet? 
Sure went to school uni. together and then uni, yeah. Bathurst Uni. Year below me at school. Bathurst? Yeah. Yep. Wow. You heard of Bathurst? Yes. Mm. Family from there, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ever been out Great there? part of the world, mate. Great part? Yep. Great part Freezing, of the world. Freezing, though. Freezing. In winter, in winter yeah. is so, like, you can't, like, at night, back when you're young and you smoke cigarettes, going outside for one was hell on earth. No, like, Surely being the V8s. Yeah. Course, we, we used to work there. there. Used to work used to be like a dish pig up there. Yeah. Man. I used to just open beers. I was on the. the I don't know how you got the. Great I know job. the closest finish in the race is history, and I'm on the finish line in a box, and all I had to do was just crack beers for fucking bogans. Did you drink the them? Fucking, well, I was allowed to. I didn't have a. They were actually like, it was like just a bunch of fucking slobby dudes who had put a shitload of money together to get a box on the thing, and they were and there's like promo girls that were in there. I was like, this is the dribbliest event I think I've ever seen in my life, but it was good fun. It's good. Fun. I'm not a big car head. You you like that? Nah, not a rev head. Uh, majority of my family or some of my family are rev heads. Rev heads Love the V8s. Mate, just rev heads a great it. word. Yeah. Oh, it is a great it's word. A great Petrol word. head, rev Petrol head. Petrol head, rev head, yeah. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> word of the week, rev head. <laughs> have, rev you, head. have you, have um, what you, what are you into outside of footy? Did you play golf? You mentioned before. Yeah, love me golf. You I do love me golf. What are you? Can't play at the moment. Me back's a bit, how you going? Oh, yeah, did you, we were saying, did, what'd you do? Did you, was it spasming or some yeah, shit the other day? Yeah, that was crook, man. I've never felt anything like what it. What happened? Man. Just... I don't know. My back just grabbed and I couldn't stand up properly. And um, as soon as they sort of lifted me up, it was a massive relief off my my back. And I was like, oh, no, I feel sweet. I feel good. I feel good. Let go. Just seized up again. I couldn't stand up. My legs went weak. It was the weirdest feeling I'd ever. Hectic. Yeah, it was hectic. And then sort of the next day and even till now, it's still a bit achy, but it's something that I can manage throughout the week. And being able to get through but i do love my golf i haven't played in a while and you just play golf yeah yeah well it's not well but we do frustrating sport. oh it's yeah, yeah incredibly it is the all right it'd have to be the hardest sport on earth yeah i it's, think so it's pretty fucking difficult you can go out there one day and play like pretty well for yourself in your from your standards and then go out the next day and just be absolutely Mate, hole to hole like i find sometimes shot i'll start shot. And i'm like just crunching something i'm like Okay, this is nice. And then the next hole, you're just complete horse shit. And I'm like, well, this, like, I don't know what I'm doing differently. Maybe it's mental. Maybe I need a fucking lesson or two. That'd be nice. If you had lessons, like, do yeah. you, see, I need a lesson, Ed. We, we don't we have, need lessons. I don't, don't really have time to invest for, for golf lessons. So I'm getting beat up week in and week out. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing I want to do is go get golf lessons at some bloke. It would be nice though to be able. I to, just want to be like better than I am. Like yeah. we say, forgettable. Like I want to play with. If I was to play with you, you wouldn't be like, "Fuck, he was bad." Like that's <laughs> all. I just don't want to. I don't want to even remember how yeah. I played. Just well, you know, <laughs> he's hitting them all right. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. if you remember him for the good reasons, yeah. sure. You don't want like, to be topping them. That's oh. it. Like you don't want to go to a golf day with people you don't know yeah. and get paired with people you don't know and just be topping them and hacking around the course and yeah. taking huge divots and not getting the ball in the air. Nah. And like sometimes I'll go out there and I'll play really uh, quite well, cream a couple of drives, ball in the air all day. And then sometimes I'll play and I'm topping every shot. Oh, I can't have that. It's a horrible feeling. It's awful, top dude. And he goes 20, awful. dribbles 20 metres in front of you and go, well, well that's one. Mate, yeah. On to the next. We There's played a charity golf day and it was like the main hole or like one where there was just the most action going on. And I just I just topped it into a bush that was like five. Sorry, I'm just having flashbacks. It was like five metres in front of me. And you just- Is that the, the hole where there was like heaps of people? Yeah, there? and it's like, oh, like just, you know, people don't want to be too rude to you because it was awful. But then some people are laughing and you're just like, bruh, I can't, I can't play if this is how I play. Like I need to. <laughs> Find a way to be better at this fucking game. Hundred percent. It's when you cream one. That's what makes you keep going. Yeah, back. Back. yeah, yeah. yeah. Holding ones. Yeah. No. Our mate got one the other day. Slam dunk. We, we do. We what run an golf asshole. days and fucking. Who is he? Fuck him. Just yeah, exactly. He's no one. Fuck Streety. But he uh, <laughs> he's like again. It was on the main hole, like the main sponsored hole, and there were cameras everywhere and shit. And he's just slam dunked it, and it was just it's, it's this video. Were you there? Him. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, we were there. So we were like, we put on these golf days, and he was. He was in one of the teams and he just nailed it. And look, Colin won on Colin camera. I wouldn't camera. read about it. That is that is the dream, eh? Yeah. Do you yeah. uh do you like catching a wave, mate? Are you a surfer? So Gold Coast boy, you'd think, yeah, wouldn't you? you? Would. But I did nippers, did all that. I used to be at the beach religiously every single day as a kid growing up, mm. doing nippers, board training in the pool. I was even did swim training. But I never surfed. Never surfed. Decided uh, I didn't want to surf and I don't know why. Mm. I wish I learnt now. Um, and now you won't 
I barely go to oh, During summer I do Go to the beach But you won't get me on the sand I fucking hate the sand Oh really? I'm in the pool Yeah the pools The beach pools Yeah they're you know, nice Bronte beach Yeah yeah that's, that's good That one's beautiful it's Not lovely. a big sand guy Nah Not in just, summer though Like a hot fucking day Sand, ocean Sticking to your skin and shit I'd rather be on the grass And just walk to the pool On the concrete Yeah right yeah, I'm we are learning. Like, we're we're about to start learning to surf. So I mean, if you want to fucking get aboard and come out, yes, yeah. we are too far gone with it. Well, listen, be, mate, the, the offers there, you know, bro. We're gonna yeah. we're looking at the Maruba Open next yeah, month. We're gonna compete. You can just you can <laughs> you can just you can just book in. You don't have to qualify. You just got to pay. It's a QS event as well. So like, we'll the, get a world ranking. Two, all the shit Dude, we'll get a world <laughs> ranking. Yeah, it was on Fuck KO off. last year. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I might come just so I can say I'm um, number yeah, 999,000 best in the world. Dude, it's not even, there's not that many. So we might be in the top 1,000 globally. Yeah. I'm not even sure. Like, So we'll have our, we'll have our uh, competition jerseys on, nip down there. We're going to have like pink wetsuits, pink boards. Oh, that's mad. Promote our, uh, When's uh, that? March, well, not, yeah, we think, well, no, it's in Vegas, dude. We're in no, Vegas that was then. that was the same day as this year. Doesn't mean it'll be the same way. Okay, well, hopefully not. But Mar well, March is where we're aiming. That's tournament day. So, so you'd be ranked training. surfers as, as of twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Which Open is just was, something for the buyer. It was know. on KO this year. The River <laughs> Open. So yeah. imagine yeah. tuning in to see Maruba yeah, fucking getting up there. Yeah. Absolute a lot of South Americans that do surf down there though. They're yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, Mate, well that's that's also the thing that we're worried about is like getting fucking flogged in the waves for like being you know, like you see surfers bashing each other because someone's dropped in on someone. Like <laughs> I'm concerned yeah. I'm not I'd lie if I say I wasn't slightly concerned about getting flogged by a South American. And they're aggressive too. Yeah, dude. They'll fuck me up. <laughs> they're aggressive surfers when yeah. you drop in on a wave. And I'm not aggressive. So well, I don't like, think we'll I think we'll stay away. Or well, we need to have someone with us. That's also a thing like catch you know, the shoreys. Well, well, like if a you big get a, jai, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, jai's not. It's not jai's break. So we need we need Rennie. We need fucking. We need a bra boy down there to fucking. Sato, see, that's Sato. Probably, there you go. Sato works. I wonder if he'll be in it. Can you put a word in for us? Yeah. Cool. Let yeah. big Sato know. Big Sato. Big Sato. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fucking take over. Um, one of the things I just wanted to ask before you go because we were talking about um during grand final like um the media was fucking crazy do you and then like i look at places like in america where like in a super bowl and just generally they get fucking pounded by the media nba they got journos in the locker rooms and shit how do you find uh media generally they don't worry me um doing media having to do things like not so much uh, this sort of shit but you know when you've got to go yeah. and do these obligations nah, it doesn't it doesn't worry me Sometimes it like, oh, can be a bit uh, draining, but I think you've got to understand it comes with a job title and I'm very understanding of that. And, mm. you know, say when I've obviously come under a bit of scrutiny in the media before. No idea what you're talking about, mate. But those things, they, it Zero doesn't idea. worry me either. Look, yeah. I understand they, we have a job, but, you know, it's the media have a job as well. I understand that if they write shit, they'll keep their jobs. So mm. I get that part. Uh, but it really doesn't worry me at all. Do you wig out when you're in the media for that sort of shit? Like when you're, you know, a bit like, are you like, oh, fuck, like don't yeah. read the papers today? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Um, but you can't really get away from it these days. Yeah. Even social media, like once it's the media put it out, it's just all over social media, so you can't get away from it. And it is what it is. Uh, don't really care. Have I bit back? Yes, I, I definitely have. <laughs> on I'll social media or yeah, to media? So, nah, social media. Yeah. What do you comment? Just inbox. Uh, comment inbox. I have before, and I'm not one to really do it at all. Yeah, I've probably done only done it a handful of times. Mm. Like we're just. Really oh mate, off. I get it. We've done it sometimes. Like again, handful, but sometimes you just like shut the fuck up, cunt. Like you can't help it, right? Yeah, it just and it doesn't make it actually doesn't help you feel any better at all. You do it, and you're like, <laughs> fuck, I should. Yeah, have what there. an idiot. Yeah, I've definitely done that before, but then again. I'm someone who doesn't really care what people think of him. Yep. Because I know as a person, I'm a really, probably a shit bloke would probably say this, but <laughs> I'm a I'm a good human being who has time for a lot of people and um, will go out of my way to make someone else happy before myself. Mm. So that's something um, yeah, I always do. And just, I think, having a lot of time for people um, – the boys probably won't say this, but I do. I have a lot of time for people yeah. and I go out of my way to um, you know, give people the time and um, and things like that. So if they don't, fuck them. 
<laughs> I think that's a nice way to fucking end it there. I think so. That was Fuck perfect. Em. Poetic. Yeah. <laughs> Poetic. Yeah. Mate, Love thanks that. for coming on. It's great to chat. Thanks, boys. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>